I say that the best part of Easter. Best. Happy Easter, boys and girls. I love Easter. I know that many of you are going to say that the best part of Easter is decorating Easter eggs or going on an Easter egg hunt. But hands down, the best part is right here. Yes, these squishy little guys. I love me some peeps. Ooh, well, actually, I did. Um, one year, I ate pack after pack of these things. I mean, so many peeps that I threw up. I hurled. I lost my cookies. Well, actually, I lost my peeps. Uh, truth be told, I can't look at these things the same way. They make me sick. I went from looking at them like with love and adoration to hate and abomination. You know, the way we look at things, the way we believe about things, it's so important. The Easter story, for example, you know, just a couple of days ago, it was Good Friday. But why do they call it good anyway? For Jesus and his disciples, it wasn't good at all. It was terrible. Good Friday was the day that Jesus died. And on that terrible, no good, awful Friday that Jesus died, the disciples were boarded up in a house. They had locked all the doors and closed up the windows. They weren't just sad because their friend Jesus had been killed. They were terrified, terrified for their lives. I mean, they were afraid that at any moment, someone was gonna barge in, accuse them of being Jesus' friends, and then they were gonna be killed too. See, that they had the wrong perspective. They had the wrong belief. Jesus had told them just even days earlier that he was the Christ that he was gonna be killed and that three days later, he would be raised from the dead. Everything was actually kind of going according to plan. The disciples had just lost perspective of the big picture. If they knew then what was going to happen on Sunday morning, they, they'd be praising the Lord for what he'd done and what he was about to do instead of shaking in their boots because Sunday morning, the third day, he is risen. He is risen indeed! Yeah! Uh, wait, wait where, where did you come from? Who, who are you? Oh, I'm Buttons. I'm Milo's cousin. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. <laughs> he invited me to church. Nice. Way to go, Milo. Um, you, um, you said he's risen, didn't you? Well, yeah. So I said, he is risen indeed! Yeah! <laughs> oh, oh, I, I gotta go. I hear my song coming on. Oh, wait, what? Um, oh, actually, I hear it too. Do, do you guys hear that? What is that? Oh, I know. Hey, let's all stand up and worship the Lord together. Come on, I mean you. Let's all stand up and praise the Lord together today. He's the chosen one, he's the champion, the winner for all time. With me to the end, Jesus is my friend, he's always by my side. Anything I face, he will be my strength.
The disciples weren't the only ones that needed a change in perspective. On Easter morning, Mary went to Jesus' tomb. And when she arrived, she saw that the heavy stone had been rolled away. Jesus' body was missing. She panicked. She lost it. She thought somebody has taken or stolen his body. And, and she ran back to the house where the disciples were to tell Peter and John. Okay, now, I love this. Peter and John race to the tomb. Literally, they, they race there. Like in John 20, John even tells us that he was faster than Peter and that he beat him. So Peter comes <gasps> huffing behind John and goes straight into the tomb to see for himself that Jesus' body is missing. The two men see then that the linen clothes and the head cloth are lying to the side and they feel defeated. They return home. Can you believe that? They see that the tomb is empty and they believe that his body has been taken away. They still don't see that he is risen. He is risen indeed! Mary stays behind at the tomb, weeping after the men have gone home. She stops to look inside the tomb and sees that there are two angels in white. Now they're probably like glowing and shiny and all of that stuff. And for the first time that I know of, they don't start with, do not be afraid. But instead they're like, why are you crying? And Mary tells them, which seems obvious, they've taken my Lord away and I don't know where they've laid him. And then Mary turns around and sees Jesus. But, but get this, the Bible says she doesn't even realize it's him. Now, I don't know if he's unrecognizable because of the gruesome death that he just endured, or that he's still covered in the sins of the world and hasn't yet ascended to the Father, or just that Jesus is the last person that Mary would think she was going to meet that day on account of him being dead. But she looks right at him and doesn't know it's him. Then Jesus asks her why she's crying and who she's looking for. And Mary assumes that Jesus is just like the gardener and says, do you know where they put Jesus' body? And then Jesus says her name, Mary. Suddenly she gets it. She knows that voice. He says her name and instantly her perspective changes. She believes he is risen. He is risen indeed. <laughs> Okay, we've got to stop meeting like this. Uh, anyway, the next thing the Bible tells us is that in the evening, the disciples are still in hiding with all the windows and the doors locked up in fear for their lives because they don't yet realize that he is risen. Oh, oh I, I didn't say it. Not yet. Anyway, they don't yet realize that Jesus is alive. And then out of nowhere, Jesus is right there in the middle of the room. Even locked doors and shut up windows can't keep Jesus from those he loves. He shows up and he says, peace be with you. He shows them the marks in his hands and in his side. And then they all celebrate because he is risen. He is risen indeed! <laughs> has risen indeed. You know, when Jesus returns to the disciples and they believe in him, he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. He fills them with the helper, the same spirit that raised him from the dead, the same spirit that we receive when we believe, the spirit of God living inside of us. But how many of us need a perspective change? How many of us need to change the way we think, what we believe? Jesus has been raised from the dead and the disciples have even seen the empty grave, but they didn't yet realize the truth. Instead of praising the Lord, they're living in fear. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to live my life in fear. I want to live my life with the perspective that the God of the universe has made his home in me. Nothing is impossible in Jesus. He is alive. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that your son is alive today. We believe that he is risen. He is risen indeed. Jesus, with the same resurrection power that raised you from the dead, we're thankful that you have, been, you have filled us with that same power, the power of the Holy Spirit, to go out and be light in a dark world. 
Lord, I pray that we would not live in fear, but in faith, faith in you, Jesus, that you are alive and still on the throne today. We love you. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. Happy Easter, amazing boys, amazing girls. He is risen. He is risen.